So um, you're probably wondering um, what pro tip I'm going to give you with toilet paper. But wait, there's more. It's going to be exciting. Guys, I'm going to teach you guys how to best use a toilet paper roll of toilet paper to understand the idea of a cavitational wound. It, it could be a puncture wound, a gunshot wound, but I'm also going to teach you how to do it to benefit you and your family. On this episode, the pro tips, Black Rifle Coffee Company. I feel like that should have been an intro or something like music. Roll music. There is none. We, we don't have the budget for music. I'm sorry. So um, we don't have the budget for uh, cool cavitational wounding stuff. That's why we're using toilet paper. Guys, the reason I think this is beneficial for you is it's a great visual, but it's also a great way to get your family involved in understanding how this works. Now, here's what I'll say because I'm not a medical expert but I've done a lot of stop the bleed, TCCC, tactical combat casualty care um, training throughout my life. I've stuffed real gunshot wounds in real life on real people. Um, this is not exactly how it works, but I'll give you the caveats uh, of how it does work versus not when I walk you through this. Imagine this is the wound. This is the hole or the wound. This wound requires a, a base of material to fill that void, a base of material to fill that void, as well as compression, because that's what stops the bleed. If you imagine a bullet created that cavitational wound, what you also have to imagine is it would be bleeding from all of these different angles because that wound is, is open. Now, what we need in that void is material. We need gauze, sterile gauze. We also need potentially um, some kind of coagulant. There's different types of coagulant, whether it's um, a, a hemostatic that is in uh, Celox Rapids, um, combat gauze, Cheeto gauze. They're all proprietary means or company names of basically the same thing, which is hemostat that's going to help chemically coagulate the blood so you require less material. I've stuffed a real gunshot wound and did four packs of gauze, sterile gauze. So if you have the coagulant embedded into the material, it's a lot better. We used to use just the powder um, that we would dump on the wound, but then realized, oh, it's more beneficial if it's in the actual material that you're stuffing into the wound. So what you do is you take a toilet paper roll just like this, you unwind the toilet paper, just like this and what you do is you take it in your hand and this will help you practice stuffing the wound now if you just stuff this into a wad like this kind of like imagine uh you take laundry uh, i'm asian i like laundry i want to say that julian um I think we're, we're both Asian and we both just shook our head yes. So I think we're allowed to say that. Imagine you're a normal person and you take, a, you take Asian. You take your laundry out. Let's say it's towels. If you just bunch it up in a pile of crap, you're going to have a lot of surface um, measured in the area that's a big ball of crap. Well, if you take it and you fold it, like you stack it on each other, kind of like this, well, then you got a stack of towels. And it's more efficient. It's more, um, it's more organized. And then you can put it away in your whatever, your Asian closet. So when you're packing a wound, you need some form of efficiency or plan. Because if you don't do that, I'll demonstrate what happens. So here, I'm going to stuff this wound. Again, this is me practicing stuffing the wound. Um, there's a couple ways, uh, techniques that I recommend. One is stacking it on top of each other. Uh, really nice and neat. Um, or uh, painting the walls with the material. Going into each corner as you stuff it into that cavity. But as I take this core, which is the, the best part of this as a visual, I could look at the inefficiency of how I stack this. You can see the big uh, bunches, which I deliberately did on purpose, of material that's just bunched together. 
that's not going to be very efficient. If, if you think about it this way, the more material you could stuff in that wound, the more, um, the more it's going to fill that void and allow you to take that material and then compress on top of that material to stop the bleed. Again, you need to stuff the wound and then you need compression to stop the bleed. So when I look at it, I got a visual and then I got a core that I could pull out, analyze and assess whether I did it right. And here's the coolest part. If you're making it a competition with your family, you could stretch it out and see, hey, who made the most efficient stuffing of the wound by measuring how much material somebody stuffed in it. And after doing this for uh, years, teaching students, um, if you do it correctly, you'll be exponentially longer with more material than somebody who's not, which is an indication that you're um, more deliberate, more efficient at stuffing that wound. Again, it takes pressure on top of that stuffing to be able to stop it. But what's fascinating, in addition to all the things that I just said, because it's fascinating, um, when you take the material and you stuff it correctly, this is like a brick when you go to compress it, right? It's because if it's efficiently stuffed, you're filling that entire space or that void with material. That is a gr the greatest way to visually and physically understand how stuffing the wound uh, goes. Now here is the caveats. One, a wound, let's say it's a nine millimeter gunshot wound, will not be that big. It's rare actually to see wounds that big, but that's what you might see on the inside, right? So if I take the nine millimeter hole, I would be stuffing material in that little hole and you might not be able to access down into the wound like you so easily can here, which is another caveat, okay? So what I want you to do is do this with your family and represent this as the wound. Get your family to efficiently stuff it, whether it's S rolling back and forth or painting the walls by pushing it into the walls of the material. Build that efficiency and make a class of it. What I will tell you after doing this years with students is it's the cheapest, most effective way to teach, especially children or young family members, how this works. Stopping the bleed is very important. If you don't stop the bleed, um, you run the risk of somebody simply passing out because they lose consciousness and then passing away. A lot of people die uh, needlessly because people don't understand basic stop the bleed tactics in first aid. Guys, I, I know it's like, what? We're doing anything on toilet paper? Um, this is super important. Um, th this is one of the things that kills a lot of people every single year in accidents, whether it's motor vehicle or falling out of a tree stand. Name the accident. Um, I hope that helped. Um, I hope you understand that this in principle is how it works. And I hope you take advantage of this pro tip on Black Rifle Coffee Company's channel. Till next time, I'm Mike Glover with Philcraft Survival. Peace out.